Learning objectives include structure and function of uh, gram-negative cell wall, and also comparison of uh, cell walls of gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. This is the cell wall of, of a gram-negative bacteria. As you can see, there are two cell membranes. This, this one here is called the inner plasma membrane or cell membrane. This one here is the outer cell membrane. Between the two, there is a space which is called periplasmic space. And within this periplasmic space, there is a thin wall of peptidoglycan. These are the same molecule as we studied in gram-positive bacteria. The only difference is that this wall is way thinner, very small amount of peptidoglycan. Then there are, there are certain proteins here uh, which are integral part of any uh, plasma membrane. They're used for different purposes. Some can act as uh, channels for ions to move or from other, for other nutrients. The visible, other visible thing that we must notice is uh, the presence of these molecules here. They are called lipopolysaccharides, LPS. This is a structure of LPS. LPS, lipopolysaccharide, consists of three parts. One is lipid A. This part is inserted into the lipid bilayer, outer membrane. Then there is a core structure, core polysaccharide. And then there is O side chain. So these are three components of LPS. Let's see what each component does for the bacteria. Lipid A, which is inserted into the plasma membrane here, this. Lipid A is like here, this part here. This acts as endotoxin. And endotoxin is, of course, it's a toxin for the body. Like uh, if a bacterium invades or causes infection in the body, this lipopolysaccharides, lipid A, when the bacteria dies, it gets released. This lipid A gets released into the circulation, into the body, and this is what causes fever during infection. And it also dilates the blood vessels and results in shock. You know when blood vessels get dilated, um, the same blood volume uh, is, ex is, is accommodated within those expanded blood vessels, and there is not very effective blood pressure. And that leads to what we call shock in veterinary or in medical terms. Second component of LPS is core polysaccharide, which basically gives the structural support. And core is this part here. And then the third part is O side chain. And let's see what O side chain does. It is uh, antigenic. Like tachoic acid in gram-positive bacteria is antigenic. Uh, so this O side chain varies from species to species of gram-negative bacteria. And much like flagellin, um, it also can be used for bacterial identification. Because this is antigenic, and antigenic is anything that when injected into the body, it mounts immune response, makes antibodies, and those antibodies would react uh, with the antigen, and they can cause uh, reaction. And by that reaction, we can recognize that this is this particular bacterium. This is a comparison between the various components of the gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, including the cell wall. As you can see, gram reaction. In gram-positive, the crystal violet, in your practicals, you would see, you would stain the bacteria with a procedure called gram staining. And what you would do is you put the dye, you make a smear on the slide, and then you flood that slide with uh, crystal violet, which is a blue stain. And then you put another chemical like iodine, and iodine interacts with the crystal violet and, and makes uh, a complex, which is called crystal violet iodine complex. And this bigger molecule is retained within the thick cell wall of the gram-positive bacteria. When you decolorize this, 
with alcohol. But gram-negative bacteria, because it has very small, very thin peptidoglycan layer, it cannot retain this complex. So this is basically the difference between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria because of the cell wall, okay? Now, as we mentioned earlier, that peptidoglycan layer is way thicker in gram-positive and is very small or thin in gram-negative bacteria. Echoic acid is present in gram-positive bacteria, but not uh, in gram-negative bacteria. Periplasmic space, because there are two membranes in the gram-negative bacteria, inner membrane and outer membrane, and there is a space between the two, and that is the reason this periplasmic space is present in the gram-negative bacteria, but generally it is absent. Most of the time it is not there. Exceptions may be few, if at all, but mostly not. Outer membrane, as I mentioned earlier, is not present in gram-positive bacteria. It is present in gram-negative. LPS is virtually none in gram-positive bacteria. Very high. And whenever there is an infection with gram-negative bacteria, like uh, salmonella, for example, uh, you see a very high fever. A person who is suffering from the disease has, runs very, very high fever, sometimes uh, life-threatening. Lipid and lipoprotein uh, contents, they are very low, but they're very high in gram-negative. Flagellar structures, there are two rings present in gram-positive bacteria, and there are four rings present in gram-negative bacteria. Toxin produced, of course, this is exotoxin. The uh, gram-positive bacteria do not have LPS, so they also, but they can secrete uh, other toxins from the cell, from the, from the cytoplasm. And when they, these toxins, they are released into the environment, they are called exotoxins. And the gram-negative bacteria, they can produce both endotoxins, which is LPS, and also exotoxins, much like these gram-positive bacteria. So there are two kinds of toxins negative bacteria can possess. Those that are released, that are made in the, synthesized in the cytoplasm, but then are released while the bacterium is still alive. But endotoxin could be released only when the bacteria is, a bacteria dies or bacteria is killed by a uh, treatment like antibiotic. Susceptibility to penicillin, of course, because gram-positive bacteria have very thick wall. If we disrupt with the antibiotic, this sensitivity means that the, the bac gram-positive bacterium is very sensitive to penicillin, but it, this one, gram-negative bacteria, because they don't have very good thick uh, cell wall, the effect of penicillin is not that much on the gram-negative bacteria. Overall resistance, overall gram-positive bacteria are much more resistant to all kinds of antibiotics or antibacterial than gram-negative bacteria. In summary, gram-positive cell wall is thicker and contains stichoic acid, and gram-negative cell wall is thin, but there is an outer membrane, and it also has LPS. Then, of course, we saw that gram-staining differences were there. Gram-positive bacteria retain that crystal violet iodine complex, while gram-negative bacteria, um, they can, cannot hold that complex when you, they are treated with the, uh, alcohol as a decolorizer. Thank you.